just go ahead and get started. Today's webinar is um, covering the basics of creating a trading system. And uh, we're basically just defining a trading system as a set of rules for entering positions, long or short, and then rules for exiting those positions. We will show you how to enter a system into the system tester and then run a simulation on historical data to see the results. We're going to start with a, a pretty well-known trading system. It's called the Turtle System. A uh, pretty interesting story behind that. Um, we don't really have time to go into that here, but uh, there's uh, a lot of information about that out on the web that uh, you can uh, research and find yourselves. But basically the system was that you would go long when prices moved above a 20-day high. You would then exit your long position when prices would fall below a 10-day low. And then you would go short when prices dropped below a 20-day low. And you would cover the short when price rise above a 20-day high. So we'll go right into the system tester. And we'll just click New to open the system editor. Just got to scoot that over here to this screen. Now on the general page, um, I'm just going to enter a name for the system. We'll just call it the turtle system. And I'll go to the buy order tab. And the formula for this is pretty simple. Um, it uses the cross function the reference function, and the highest high value function. We'll start with the cross. <clears throat> and then H for high, because we're the high price is our um, primary price point that we're looking at. And then we we'll use the reference function and inside that we add the highest high value function which looks for the highest high value of a data array and that data array is again the high and um, and then you have to enter a time period parameter so for that we're just going to enter 20 And then I enter a comma. And then I'm, I'm now finishing off the reference function with a minus 1. And that completes our formula for looking for the high, the, the, the current high going above the highest high of the last 20 periods. Does anybody have any questions up to this point? Um, we have a question, is this the trading plan webinar? Uh, no, it is not. Um, I'm not familiar exactly with what that is, but you probably want to check with our sales team. They should have information about that. Okay, I guess we don't have any questions about uh, this particular formula, so we'll just go ahead and move on. I'm going to go to the sell order. <clears throat> which would be exiting the long position. And uh, that formula is similar. We start with the cross, but this time we're looking at the low price. So I just type in L for low. And then I enter a comma. By the way, we'll be covering the cross function in a little bit more depth uh, later on in our session here. 
so that you'll kind of understand it a little bit better. And then again, just, just like I did with the highest high value, or the lowest low value function, and that is LLV, and that it looks for the lowest low value, which in case in this case is going to be the low price. And in this time we're looking for it over a 10 day time period. And then I enter minus one to finish off my reference function. And now I have my my cell order formula. For cell short, it's uh, pretty much not quite, but pretty much uh, almost the opposite of going long. We are going to look for the the lowest price of the last 20 days, excuse me, price crossing down below the lowest price of the last 20 days. So we'll again start with our cross function. We're looking at the low price. Oh, excuse me, I have to enter the reference function in there. By the way, um, let me just take a moment or so to explain that why we're using the reference function here. And the reason is that uh, if we were to enter the if we were to enter the formula without it, then we would we would be including the current low, and if that current low is the lowest low, then it would kind of just be comparing it to itself. So by using the reference function, we can take out the current low and, and look at just the, the lows of the last 20 days prior. Does anybody have any questions about that? Um, we have we do have one question about caps and no they are not necessary. Uh, um, I'm just using them so that uh, they appear a little bit better. Okay, we'll just go ahead and continue on then. So we, we, we started off with the cross function and we're looking for the low to cross below the lowest low of the last 20 periods. So I'm going to enter 20. I now have my sell short order entered. And we'll enter our buy to cover order, which is the high price crossing the high of the last 10 periods. And in one more parentheses there. Okay, and uh, so now there we have it. We've completed entering the formulas for the turtle system. Now I'm going to go back to the general page here for a moment and uh, um, show you the settings here. 
on the order bias. Um, I don't think that we'll have this situation arise, but uh, in the event that you were to receive a signal to go both long and short on the same bar, the order bias decides which order to choose. But again, I don't think we'll have a situation where we have both on the same bar in this system. Portfolio bias is allowing or telling the system tester to trade either multiple positions or single positions. Excuse me, it's <clears throat> in the event that you again have a situation where you may have a signal to go long and short at the same time, the portfolio bias will either allow that or it won't. If it's set to multiple, then it will allow that. And then the last parameter there is our position limit, um, which allows you to limit the number of simultaneous positions to a specific value or not. You can uncheck that if you want to have multiple positions open at the same time. Okay, well, um, we're going to just go ahead and uh, run a simulation with this system. So now I'm back to the system tester, and I have my system shown there. So I'll click Next. Um, but let me just pause for a second here. We have a couple of questions. Um, one is if the formula is ref LIV or LLV. Um, it is LLV, which is short for lowest low value. And then uh, a question. Can you do the same but buy if the next day's price is then making a new high, not today? That is possible, but the formula would be different. Um, we can we can answer that uh, formula by email, or excuse me, answer that question on how to do that by email. Okay, we'll go ahead and continue with uh, the simulation here. I'm just going to uh, run this simulation on the symbol SPY, the S&P 500 Spider Depository Receipt. Um, on my options here, I've got the position type set to both, so we'll be going both long and short. And I'm going to test it over the last 2,000 periods on a daily basis. That's about uh, eight years. Our in interval will be daily. And I'm just going to do a points only test. We'll, we'll see the results strictly in terms of points, point changes up or down. Um, I'm going to leave the commissions at zero. I know that's not the real world, but uh, just, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to leave them at zero. And we're going to use realistic market prices, which means that... Uh, we're entering our positions on the open of the day following the occurrence of a symbol. So I'll go ahead and hit start. And we now have our results. And the results show that uh, our system was profitable. It earned 31 points over that time period. However, we can see that the buy and hold profit was higher. So for this particular security, it would have 
really not uh, been advantageous to trade this system over this time period. It would have been you would have made more more money buying and holding, and that's really uh, a, 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 an important piece of information to know because we can we could then go and test this on a different security or a basket of securities, um, or we could uh, find a different system for this security. But I'll, really quickly here, let's just take a look at uh, some of the statistics from the test. Um, we had a total of 83 trades. Only 32 were profitable. The average profit was about 5 points. The highest profit was 27.9 points. And then for our unprofitable trades, we had about 51. Average loss was about 2.75. Okay, does anybody have any questions to this point? Okay, we just have a couple of questions here. Um, <clears throat> uh, we have a question from uh, Robert uh, about the profit loss index. It basically just compares the uh, the profits and the losses. Um, more information about that is in the system tester help, and you're certainly welcome to send an email to us, and we'll give you a more detailed explanation. Um, we have a question from Terry about volatility stops and would that improve performance. Um, very likely um, we, we, we could uh, incorporate volatility stops into this system. It's, it's quite a bit more programming and uh, we don't really have time to cover that here but uh, we could handle that by email. Okay, so uh, what I'll do now is uh, we want to do another system that's just a simple crossing of two moving averages to show you a couple of things. Um, number one, how the cross function works and um, just kind of more in-depth uh, or more instruction on creating a system. So I will then go ahead and click New. And we'll call this one a... We're going to use 20 period moving average and 40 period. I'm just going to call it 20 and 40 moving average. And then for our buy order, we'll start with the cross function. And uh, let me just uh, go over how the cross function works. You should be able to see fairly simply um, from what I'm going to show you here. Uh, the basic syntax for the cross function is just the word cross and then an open parentheses, and then data array 1. And then, the, and then there's a comma. And then the next part of it is data array 2. And it, it, the the functioning of this expression is that data or it always looks for data array 1 to be crossing above data array 2 so the sit, the, the function is true when data array 1 crosses above data array 2 now our our data array 1 and 2 are going to be two moving averages so i'm just going to take these out 
and uh, we'll go ahead and enter a moving average function and this will be a 20 period moving average This is a 20, these are going to be simple moving averages, so I'm just going to enter S for simple there. <clears throat> now I have my data array 1 entered, which is a 20 period simple moving average function. And then we'll go ahead and enter a 40 period moving average. So now we have our by order formula entered, which is the 20 period simple moving average crossing above the 40 period simple moving average. For the cell order, we want to do just the opposite. We want to sell out of the position when the 20 period moving average crosses below the 40 period moving average. So we'll again start with the cross function. In this case though we have the 40 period moving average as data array 1. and the 20 period as data array 2. So now we have our our formula to for the buy order or for going long and then we have our formula for the sell order or for exiting the long position. Does anybody have any questions up to this point? Okay, we'll continue on then. Oh, looks like we do have uh Maybe one or two more questions coming in, so I'll just pause for another moment or so. Okay, uh, Robert is asking about using the letter E if you want to use an exponential moving average. Um, that is correct. If I wanted to do an exponential moving average, I would just substitute the S's for the letter E. Okay, we'll just go ahead and go on for the cell short order. Um, in this case, the cell short order is really the exact same thing as the cell order or exiting the long. So, um, really don't have to type it in over again. I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this formula over to the cell short order. And then we can do the same thing with our buy to cover. So I'll copy the buy order. And our buy to cover, excuse me, into our buy to cover tab here. And then we'll go ahead and uh, we'll just run that on SPY, SPY. And our results, uh, this time we have a small loss. So what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to make some adjustments to this trading system.
And we're going to use uh, the optimization function to do that. So we'll just go ahead and close out of the report here. I'll go back to the system tester and then we'll edit our system and come over here to the optimizations tab. And, uh, but first we have to um, modify the formulas for optimization. Now uh, optimization is a process of varying the parameters of a system to find the optimal parameters. And the parameter that we're going to vary in this system is the length of the, our moving averages. So rather than having a fixed 20 period and 40 period, we're going to tell the system tester to try um, a combination of moving average periods to see if we can find some better results. So just going back to the by order formula here, I'm going to go right to where we have our, our periods input for the moving average. And I'm going to take out the 20, and I'm going to enter OPT1, which is short for Optimization Variable 1. And for our second moving average, we'll call that OPT2, which is Optimization Variable 2. And then I'll just copy that over to the buy to cover order. We'll come into the sell order and do the same thing. Okay, now on on this on the on my sell order. We're going to reverse the optimization variables in the cross function. So for our 40 period moving average, we're using OPT2. And then for our 20 period, we were using OPT1. And then we'll just copy that over to our cell short formula. Now, um, now that we have our optimization variables chosen, we were going to come. We're going to come over to the optimizations tab, and now you can see that we have OPT1 and OPT2 showing there, with each with a minimum and maximum of zero and a step of one. So we'll go ahead and edit OPT1. And, and uh, we need to define a minimum and a maximum and a step. The minimum is the, that's the, the minimum moving average time period value that the system tester will start at. And the maximum is the highest value that it will go to. So instead of uh, just having 20 periods, why don't we make a range of, say, 10 periods up to 30 periods. <clears throat> and, then, and then the step is the the number of units that the system tester will increment between the minimum and the maximum. With, with it one, it will start out at 10 periods, then go to 11 periods, then to 12, and so on. Uh, just to make things a little bit faster, we're going to change that up to 2. So what it will do is the system tester will start with 10 period moving averages, a 10 period moving average, then it will go to 12, then to 14, then to 16, and so on, all the way up to 30. So we'll just go ahead and click OK to set that. And now we have our uh, optimization parameter one set. So we'll click on optimization two and we'll edit that. 
<clears throat> for that, why don't we start at a value of 20. And we'll, we'll just do a maximum of 50 on that. And then we're going to increase the step on that up to 5. So it will start out at 20 periods, then go to 25, then to 30, and so forth. Okay, so now we have our, all of our formulas have optimization 1 and 2 in place of the moving average time periods. So we'll go ahead and just run our simulation and let's see what, uh, what kind of results we get. Okay, now here we have our summary graph of our of, of five results. And the reason there are five is that uh, there is a setting to show the number of most profitable optimized results and the default on that setting is five. Um, so of my top five results, we have our net profit. The reason the percent gain is showing NA is that we are running a points only test. Uh, that column only shows values if you run what's called an equity test. But uh, we, can, we can just sort our list according to the net profit and see that we, we have one combination of moving averages that generated 83 points over the time period that we tested. Further along the, the, the report here, we have the number of trades, the number of profitable trades and losing trades, the average profit for each trade, average profit or average loss. And then over here at the far right are our OPT1 and OPT2, optimization 1 and optimization 2 parameters. And, in, and we can see that in this case, using a combination of a 16-period moving average and a 30-period moving average proved to be better than using a 20-period and a 40-period. And looking at these net profit results, they're all pretty similar that we don't really have a, a wide variation there. Um, if I look at uh, this third one down, which is ID number four, I earned 79 points, but I had 32 winning trades compared to only 25 losing trades. Um, so if, <clears throat> if you want to have more winning trades, if, if psychologically that's more comfortable, then you, you could use the 20 period and the 30 period moving averages in your system. That's just a uh, kind of an example of how you can look at various results here on the system tester to decide which system may be best for you. You may not necessarily want the one that has the absolute highest net profit if a lot of those profits came from only one or two trades. You may, you may prefer one that has a higher ratio of winning trades to losing trades. Okay, we're just going to drill into the uh, these results a little bit uh, 
more. Um, we want to go ahead and plot this on the chart. Up here on the top of the chart is what's called the equity line. And in this case, it's just showing point gains, but over time, it's showing you how much your equity is growing as you are trading the system. You can see that it never really got, uh, doesn't look like it ever got below zero. It got close, but uh, never, never came below zero. And even at a time when the market was falling, the, the amount of equity was growing. Okay, just some questions here. Um, Robert is asking if we can see the results or actual loss for unprofitable consecutive trades. We can go back into the system tester look at the reports and then I can look at the positions and it will show me all of the information about each position and again there's more details about these are available in the help file um, or we can answer the questions on those by email Um, are there any other questions up to this point? <clears throat> All right, we have another question about uh, saving this chart and as a template. Um, let me just close out of the report here so we can get a better view of the chart. You certainly can save this chart as a template. However, if you do, all of these um, trade markers will be saved into the template. And they will they will not really apply well to other securities, so we probably want to just clean clean those up. I can remove those easily by going to edit, delete all, <clears throat> choosing symbols, and then I just click OK. <clears throat> if I did want to make a uh, a uh, an expert for this particular trading system using the optimized variables then <clears throat> I can do that and to show valid buy and sell signal markers for this particular security we covered that in our uh, very first formula webinar which is available on our YouTube channel um, then we have another question about how to run this formulas for a specific stock. Again, that's uh, that's kind of covered in our first webinar. You would create an expert with the parameters of this system and then just attach it to this chart. And then each day as you update the chart, it will show you if you get uh, any buy or sell signals. Um, we have a question from Henry. Can you test the turtle trading system with over and under any given, given moving average? You certainly can do that. Um, the original turtle system was, was just using 20 periods and 10 periods, 20 period highs and 10 period highs and 20 period lows and 10 period lows. Um, but uh, you, you can certainly modify that any way you wish. 
we, we don't really have time to go into that here, but we can, if you want us to show you how to do that, we could do that by email. Just, uh, if you have any more questions, go ahead and uh, enter them. Looks like we have a couple of questions coming in. Um, while we're waiting on those, um, <clears throat> on the uh, use of optimization, you want to be careful and not uh, over-optimize. Sometimes if you over-optimize, there's a danger of what's called curve fitting, where you, you basically run through numerous sets of optimization variables and uh, you run many many tests and and you pretty much are finding the results that uh, you just want to find but then those results may not be attainable in real trading going forward um, there's a lot of uh, a lot has been written about optimization and curve fitting. We you know we're, we uh, we we kind of just barely t touching the tip of the iceberg on that. Um, I would I would suggest researching that further. Um, but uh, when when optimizing, it's really best to uh, <clears throat> not go overboard, so to speak. Use maybe one or two optimization variables in your system. Um, keep the steps to a good spacing apart, and uh, and you know you should probably avoid the dangers of curve fitting. Anything? Okay, just uh, just another recommendation on optimization. Um, you want to look at the the whole picture of the the system results net profit profit profitable trades versus losing trades the equity curve and you really want to be comfortable with all three um, a lot of uh, a lot of traders have a difficult time with a system that may have a large number of losers and a small number of winners even though those winners may have very large wins and uh, just to kind of reiterate that so um, find the you know find a system that uh, optimizes with uh, a good combination of net profit profit profitable and unprofitable trade ratio and equity curve Okay, we just have a couple more questions here um, asking if this will be on YouTube. Yes, it will be. Uh, it, it will probably take a day or so to get it posted up there, but uh, yes, it will be. And then uh, also a question from Henry wanted to thank William for the formula that, you, that he did for you. Um, Let's just uh, open up the floor for any final questions here in the last few minutes. Go ahead and uh, feel free to enter those. Um, we have just another question uh, asking if the webinar will be put on YouTube. Yes, it will be. Um, uh, it will. It'll take a couple of days to get it uh, posted up there, but yes, it will be. Um, the uh, the address is youtubecom slash metastock. Okay, looks like we're uh, 
we just have a couple of thank yous and uh, we want to thank everybody for joining us and uh, if you do have any more questions after we're complete send them to formulas at metastock.com or at uh, support at metastock.com.